Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and now I'm covering the qualifying round, Silicon Valley nine hole cup. This is gonna be the pro division, holes one through seven, skipping hole number eight and hole number nine. Unfortunately, on both of my pro accounts, I hit great shots on my drive, uh, which put me in the rough. One account I was able to rebound and save the birdie. The other one I picked up a par. So super frustrating, but it is what it is. And I guess, you know, we all just have days like that. But overall, I can still help you get to a very strong score in the pro division. And then we'll see what we can do in the final round. All right, let's go. Hole number one. Hole number one, I like to play the funnel shot. So I don't push the drive. I'm going to go with a katana. Three bars a side spin to the right with a little bit more than one top, you know, maybe 1.3, one and a half. And then I add a little bit of curl to the right-hand side on this drive, which you're gonna see right there. I really had a case of the greats today in pro division. You know, I really don't know what my problem was, but you know, see here, a great drive. Um, that was a common theme today for me. So that was pretty frustrating, but that's all right. Here we go, 10% at minimum distance. I like to use the thorn here. Um, and what you wanna do is kind of push your target towards the beginning of the fringe. And that's when you'll really find the most developed ball guideline. Here you see I use just a click of top spin. Sometimes you have to use a little bit of side spin to the left as well. But I was able to find the funnel, you know, pretty darn quick right here on this shot. And you'll see that you know when it hits down here it comes in very nice and smooth towards the pin uh, now if you don't like this shot you know of course you could take it and just play straight at the pin like we do in rookie division uh, by using your thorn and adding some backspin playing at 10 percent of your club but for me that's how i typically play hole number one here in pro on this course takes us to hole number two we're going to play hole number two 20 percent at max for me, I try to go with the rough bump in any wind angle that I can, and we're going to be using a Titan ball here. Of course, a Kingmaker would help reduce the wind. That's completely up to you. I try to use as few of those types of good balls as I can in qualifying round of nine hole cups, as the prizes aren't that good, so I don't invest too much into them, um, you know, at least during the qualifying round. So, you're going to note here, I'm going to go with two bars of side spin to the left. Even if you use a kingmaker, that's all you want to go with. And you're going to notice here a little bit more than six bars of top spin, about 6.2 bars of top. Now, what I am trying to do is find a good space on the rough to land. We do have a little bit of wind pushing from right to left, which is why you're going to see a little bit of an offset here. That's not the offset. We're, we'll find it here. All right, right there. So we'll, we'll rewind here just a tad so you can kind of see where I'm aiming. You'll notice here that almost the left end of my ball guy line is almost touching the right edge of the cup. Then here I make my adjustment. Now, if you're not good at rough bumps, I can kind of tell you another way you can try to play this hole. If rough bumps aren't your thing, especially from this far, what you can try to do is you can take a navigator ball, okay? You can go max backspin, half a bar of side spin to the right, 30% at mid, and you wanna move your target until basically the ball guideline, the end of your ball guideline is hopping over the cup, okay? Dead center, have it hopping over the cup, full back, half right, 30% at mid, and you'll be all over the pin, um, you know, on that type of shot. Some of you will drop it, some of you won't, but you're going to be close. It'll be a guaranteed birdie, okay? That'll take us here to hole number three. We're going to play the drive 0% at max. Here, we're going to use a Titan ball. We're going to go with two bars of side spin to the left. And then we're going to use a little bit of top spin here as well, which you see. I did set the top spin at three bars. I do back my target up here pretty far back. You see, I started at the plus three. That's just because, you know, we're pulling into headwind. But ultimately, um, we don't have to push this drive as we don't need a lot of distance. Here, we're using half a ball to curl to the left as well. All we really want to do is just land right here on the fairway. 
because no matter what, we want to take shot number two around minimum distance of our sniper. And we do that to find a funnel and to obviously make pulling the rings and the adjustment a lot easy when you can play something at absolute minimum. So you see here, I back up to the absolute minimum mark. Keep in mind, um, the best way to find minimum distance with your sniper is to have your grizzly in your bag not the Goliath. So make sure you have the Grizzly in the bag when you're trying to find minimum distance of the sniper. Here you're gonna notice that I apply just a little bit of backspin and I apply one bar of side spin to the left, about 0.8 back. You can see me wiggle my target around until I find the sticky spot. You'll also notice here that the ball guideline is going dead center through the hole. The only thing that happens here to prevent us from the albatross is it's just too much left side spin, okay? On my other account, I took the left side spin off entirely and I missed way far to the right. My suggestion here to get this albatross is to duplicate the backspin to make your ball guideline go through the hole, but only use half a bar of side spin to the left. You see we're very, very close. The speed is great, but we just burn the left edge of the cup again. Just a tad too much left side spin there, all right? Hole number three uh, provides us for just a great chance for the Alba. That'll take us to hole number four. This one is a tougher hole. Now, again, I'm only using a Katana here uh, just simply for the fact that I'm trying to conserve balls, um, you know, obviously for full tournaments where prizes are better. You can use a Kingmaker here if you're trying to get this drop. A uh, little bit unlucky to get 7.5 mile per hour wind since that's the highest you can get in pro with the Katana Ball. Notice here one bar of side spin to the right with about 2.9, 2.8 bars of back spin, something like that. Take note of the offset position here. Use those light green and dark green reference points. Also notice that the end of my ball guideline would be well beyond the cup, you know, by at least one green square, maybe one and a half green squares. Again, that's because of how high of a wind push we're getting. Yellow ring right there on top of the rough. Now, the other difficult part about this for a lot of players is you're going to have to push your rings instead of pull. Uh, that can cause a lot of confusion for some players who aren't used to doing that. If you go to pull your rings, you're going to be pulling into the sand, and it's going to be very difficult to pull that accurately. Here, we try to push this as straight as possible. Sometimes I have a hard time doing that on that big of a, of a uh, push. But I do hit perfect, and you're going to see here that we come in actually really nice. I mean, the speed is good. It comes in really nice. We just missed that one barely to the left-hand side. So you could try to duplicate the landing spot and then just add a little bit more right spin or try to offset a little bit more. But you can see here, holes one, two, three, and four, either we're dropping the shot or we're uber close to starting off to a perfect round. That'll take us here to hole number five. Don't really, I don't really play this hole for the albatross. I just go no moving target, three bars of side spin to the right. I'm sorry, to the left. Three bars of side spin to the left combined with, you know, three bars of top spin. So three and three. The only time we move our target here is whenever we go to adjust for the wind which is what we're doing right now. Again, just using a katana ball, even though we're getting a little bit of headwind. Uh, I play this one just like I would play it in Tor 2 to where I pack the Horizon. So the Horizon club for me is going to be the club of choice. You're just going to have a ton of top spin. Uh, you can bring a big dog. You can bring a cataclysm. I mean, you could even play it with a sniper if you wanted to. But for me, you know, the Horizon at any club level you know, really three and above is going to be preferred for this shot here. Obviously, I have a level seven. Uh, that's not going to do anything. It is a little bit more powerful. It does have a better ball guideline. We're not using either of those um, as we're not even going with that much top spin. All we're trying to do is just make sure that we get the ball to the green. So again, lower level horizon players, no fear. You're going to easily be able to get down to the green and push your ball towards the cup. I could have played it with a little bit more LP or I could have played it with a little bit more top spin. To me, it doesn't really matter. That's a more difficult hole to pick up an albatross on. Uh, I just take it for the eagle and then we move on here to this hole. Now, this hole is a nightmare and headwind situation. This one normally provides us with a really good chance to pick up the eagle. Now, even though I do pick up the eagle here on this account, 
uh, it's more of a lucky drive than anything. The good news about this hole is it's a high, re it's a low risk, high reward, meaning that even if you screw the drive up, you're more than likely almost every single time going to pick up a birdie. Okay, even if you drive the sand or you drive the rough. Uh, there is a funnel here uh, on the green that can get your ball guideline to go into the hole. You typically play it with no spins at all, all right? Hopefully you're not in that situation, but a lot of you will be, um, including myself on one account. But here I'm going with the Zerk because of the headwind, and we're going to go with two bars of side spin to the right, and then combine with about two bars of back spin. Here, I'm just trying to find a spot to pick. I'm going to have to back up my target quite a bit. So you can see here that my green ring is basically on the rough line at the plus 22 yard mark. So I'll pull my rings. I didn't even worry about pushing up to max. I just took a full OP shot with half a ball to curl to the right. Uh, I did hit perfect. So, I mean, that's nice. I'm going to get the full distance here on the shot. And, you know, on this account, I got lucky. I stayed on the green. My other one went a little bit too long as um, it rolled into the sand on the back. And unfortunately, I hit a great shot and couldn't save it. So, uh, but at least here we do have one replay. Zerk is definitely going to be the preferred option for free-to-play balls. Anybody having something like a Megalodon where you're going to have very high power combined with very high wind resistance uh, puts you at a big, big advantage on this hole, as this is a hole that most players normally eagle, unless it's this wind situation, okay? So take advantage of it if you can or if you want to. That'll take us on here to hole number seven. I, I really hate this hole um, so bad. I am going to go with uh, backspin combined with one bar of side spin to the right. You see here that I apply five bars of backspin with one bar of side spin to the right, I put my ball guideline here to the right-hand side of the cup, just very fearful of rolling off of the green from right to left because then that leaves you with a max distance putt on this hole. Uh, this one here in headwind, I'm just playing it very safe. If we were to get like a nice crosswind angle or even a nice tailwind, uh, I may play the rough bump in the final round. That's assuming that I make it to the final round. But um, this right here in headwind, I'm just playing it safe. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm just playing it for the birdie. And then we move on as I'm not going to spend a lot of practice tokens or balls in qualifying of a nine-hole cup, you know, to dial in that hole in one. Uh, here we go to hole number nine. Keep in mind, I apologize that I had to skip hole number eight. I just bombed it on both of mine. So uh, hole number nine here in crosswind, you know, if you just want to go uh, easy way possible, you can just bring a Titan ball here. You can bring a Kingmaker. Make sure you pack your Guardian, your Big Dog, or your Cataclysm, okay? If you have an extra mile nine and a Berserker, you can definitely go full top spin and get yourself up to the second fairway. I decided not to play that shot um, since, you know, I used a Berserker already on one hole in this round. And it's still, this is still a very difficult hole to Albatross, even if you make it to the second fairway. So I'm only playing it for an eagle, all right, and a very safe eagle as I'm not pushing the second shot at all. So here, after I apply my spins, uh, you're going to notice in this wind angle, okay, the wind is favorable going from right to left. The end of my ball guideline is in the rough to the left hand of that sand trap at the top. Here, I just make my adjustment and then max curl to the left hand side. I hit a great ball. As I said, I struggled with great shots earlier, but still this drive is pretty easy to execute. As long as we land at the top of the fairway here like we did, uh, we're going to be picking up the eagle unless you really shank your second shot. All right. So 0% at max. And here I was trying to get a little cute to see what I could do. Um, you know, the only thing I don't like is the wind blowing from uh, right to left here. Because when you start to adjust your shot, the tree line can get into your way. And that has cost me in tournaments before. Which is why you're going to see me pull here. You see me get into the tree line. But I know that I'm okay with this club. I do hit perfect. I knew that would be important. Definitely don't want to hit a great right. 
And I just land on the green, and we're putting in for the eagle there. Hey, best of luck, everybody. I hope this, you know, you hope you find some of this helpful. You know, I think at least holes one through six could really help you get off to a really solid start. You need to just figure out hole number eight. You know, don't hit a great shot on that little bitty thin fairway, and I'll think you'll be okay. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and I'll talk to you on Saturday. Thanks, everybody.